time. Mm, not sure one. Make it a little harder. The lips are going to kind of cross over each other. It's more or less a frown. Then we put a space for the lip in there. I'm using a photo. Let me add a photo while I'm doing this one. But it should come out fine because the principles are the same. We draw the lines we want and then work around those. And if we can see all the features around this particular expression, it's probably some kind of a frown. Your mouth isn't always curves, you can use whatever line you need, circle and angle, I think I will leave the teeth in there, just to give it even more of a bite to it, now we're going to add the gloss to it, one way to give it the lip even more form is the same technique I do on the eyes, by leaving a little bit of separation between the lid and the point of interest itself, which in the eyes case would be the iris but for the lip would be the teeth because there's shadows in the mouth. We'll add a little bit of a separation here in the gloss. And this is an interesting expression indeed. And I can see in the photo because it's mostly just a mouth. They have the nose a little higher. So it is some kind of a frown. But we can make that frown easily just by drawing the line, what I call the essential line. This is the shape we want the mouth to be. An epic frown. Grimy. And there you have it. Again, the lip will stretch and the shape of it will change depending on how severe the expression is, the intensity of it, how wide the mouth is becoming. One thing we need to know about the mouth when we're going to draw it is that it is a little bit elastic. The skin of it, that is. So here we have a pencil again, a mouth that's smiling. And you can see the upper lip stretches and gets smaller. And this happens for most people, although I have seen people where they have really full lips and their mouth just lips retain the same size throughout, smiling or frowning whatever that does happen but generally the upper lip will shrink because it stretches skin is elastic previous video or the video 
later after this, depending on the order I decide to upload them in. The lines you leave out are just important as the ones you add. So I'm going to leave this empty because we already have enough information here for me to do that. The bottom left line where the teeth starts doesn't fully connect. We already have enough information that you can tell it's a mouth by itself. And once you're there, where you have enough information laid down, you can stylize it as much as you want. So in short, the in review, just start with the essential line of the mouth, the top, the bottom, whatever you want the expression to be. Always remember to add form by adding the teeth if they're visible, or even if they're not totally visible, give some indication of them. That'll give your mouth depth. You can distinguish a female mouth between a male mouth by the level of detail you go into but always make sure you do give your men lips, otherwise it just looks like a cartoon, which is okay if you want it to look like that, but for realism, you do want to flush it out a bit more. And another thing to remember is the skin of the lips is elastic, so it can change depending on, sometimes the lip can get fuller if you're pouting and thinner if you are smiling or making some other more exaggerated expression. Recommended reading includes Adam Hughes's nice section in Wizard Magazine about drawing mouths and women in general. A lot of the same principles he did in that can be applied to male mouths as well. It's practically the same thing. Andrew Loomis, anything by him, but drawing the head and hands in particular has measurements, diagrams on the human face, including mouths and such. So I highly recommend that as well. You can find more of my work on the internet, Facebook at facebook.com slash artbyatlas. That's A-T-L-A-S. You can find me on deviantart.com at atlas0.deviantart.com and on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. So thank you for watching.